Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936-647-3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas, at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images. Thanks for checking out this archived episode of The Ticket Stub. Connor here, one of the hosts of the show. I'm doing this while Dick is away. Guys, I know that y'all love the show, but I know that he is the worst part. I'm trying to find another co-host. So if any of y'all have any ideas, please let me know. But in the meantime, go ahead and subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, all at the Ticket Stub Podcast. You can send us an email at the Ticket Stub Podcast at gmail.com, or you can find us on Facebook at the Ticket Stub. And be sure to listen live every Thursday on IRLoneStar.com or FM 104.5 and 106.1 in the Conroe area. Thanks and enjoy the show. Shall we begin? All right. Welcome to the Ticket Stub Podcast. Let's begin. Broadcasting live right now on Lone Star Community Radio and IRLoneStar.com worldwide. This is Dick. We are Connorless today. Uh, he'll be back next Thursday, but in, in place of him is someone, if not equally better. Uh, we have Chris Appel in the studio. The, yes, I am here. He is here. He was on a uh, earlier episode of the show, so if you're a subscriber to our podcast or, you, or YouTube, you can check that out. Uh, he is the GM, the Grand Master of uh, <laughs> the Grand <laughs> Theater uh, north of Conroe. It's, uh, they have 14 theaters uh, and it's pretty much the go-to place in Conroe to go see a movie. Uh, te- check them out at thegrandtheater.com, and then you can check out uh, the Conroe's location. And uh, But, yeah, so he is our co-host. See, this is cool because How is this cool? I get to be the Ed McMahon to your Johnny Carson. Well, there he goes. So any joke you make, I can go like, I yes, yeah. you that, are correct. That sir. is funny, yes. Stuff like that, right? And then we have Austin Oz <laughs> as our engineer. He's our fact checker and all that good stuff. So we're going to have a good show today. We have a great lineup of uh, – we have a game planned between Chris and I. Uh, we're going to play, if we can guess, the actor or actress in a trivia thing hosted by our uh, engineer here, Austin. And then we're going to cover some movie news, movie theater news. And then also, uh, of course, we got our – at the end of the show, we're going to be covering our summer blockbusters. Uh, we did have Dunkirk was was uh, released over the weekend and a lot of positive, positive things. If anything, that's probably the most well-reviewed movie over the summer, I, I bet, just because of uh, how big it was and how Christopher Nolan likes to be weird. and uh, Yeah, we've heard really good, positive stuff about the movie. I mean, everybody that, that comes to it seems to love it. The The comment I get is that it just sort of throws you into it. There's no backstory yeah. with the characters. It just, just well, goes right out from the beginning. Well, one thing I love about Christopher Nolan, he's so good at telling a story through the images Mm -hmm. and it's one of those things that kind of like paul thomas anderson can do is just they don't have to be dialogue it's just images and sound and you get what's happening right uh and this it takes a special talent that's how you can know that's how i can tell if a director is really talented in the way they tell their story or especially in storyboarding i can't imagine storyboarding with uh, christopher nolan because it's just so much detail yeah uh and that's one thing i did when i was telling connor about the movie i was like i already know what the movie's gonna be about there's like 20 minutes of dialogue, and then it's just a bunch of people moving in the sand, and then a mm-hmm. bunch of waves crashing. Yep. <laughs> and then there's probably like five minutes of just loudness, and then, yeah. uh, and then that's it. There's the movie. Spielberg's uh, pretty good at that on occasion. He's really good at dialogue, yeah. though. I really like Spielberg's dialogue in his movies, especially like the Indiana Jones movies and things like that. Yeah. The, the, the dialogue in Indiana Jones is so much fun and playful mm-hmm. at the same time. being It keeps moving. Yep. That's what I like about it. But that movie, I haven't seen it, and uh, I'm not one of those folks who oh, I need a 70 millimeter IMAX theater to go see it. It's probably the best way to see it because it's filmed on those gigantic cameras, and it's really awkward. One thing I don't like about Christopher Nolan movies is he does use different cameras, mm-hmm. so it really annoys me when you're watching a movie and you see the black bars, no black bars, black bars, no black bars. Yeah, we're just and, in and out of IMAX. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. and you can definitely tell on certain movies like the uh, 
the Dark Knight had a lot of shots like that. Yes, it did. And mm-hmm. it, it kind of, especially if you have a horrible TV you're watching on, and the black, the, the true black isn't really there, you can definitely notice because <laughs> it's a little brighter. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the Dirk, Dunkirk movie, uh, if you want to go see it at the Grand, actually, I'm looking at you have a lot of movie times for it. So there's plenty of times starting at uh, 10, 11 a.m. Uh, all the way to 7:45. If I'm reading that correctly, actually, let me. Nope, no 10:30. And uh, so generally at the theater, that was good reviewed. Uh, so get out and see Dunkirk if you're in for a, a slow drama. Is it drama? What would you consider that movie? I, I, action drama. It's very action oriented. Yeah. I mean, from the get go, it's guns blazing. Yeah. Yep. And the sound uh, is absolutely masterful. I mean, it, you just found out I've been reading reports that a lot of theaters have been having trouble sound mixing the movie. Because really? either it's too loud or it's too soft. And. I don't know. That was just people saying like they they feel like Christopher Nolan movies, which he does. Like his his soundtrack isn't really music; it's more of just like tones. Yeah, and oh, I guess Hans Zimmer, but but uh, <laughs> but they don't mix it well with the dialogue, and it's either really too loud or too soft. That's what they were saying about the movie. Well, so. I mean, every gunshot felt real. I mean, every time there was like a pause, a silence, and then the guns were like yeah. jumped. <laughs> But uh, but definitely check out Dunkirk, uh, and I'm excited to see what Christopher Nolan does next. Uh, I don't think he's really announced anything. Uh, he's probably going to be working with uh, Bane again. He's like in every movie. The joke around now is the actor, I think it's Tom, is it Tom? Uh, Tom Hardy. Yeah. Tom Hardy. The joke mm-hmm. with him is every movie he has to be in, he has to cover his face uh, okay. at some point. <laughs> and, uh, that's, and he goes, he's really talented. That's the joke. He's really talented <laughs> with just his eyes. But uh, but yeah, so get out there and see Dunkirk. We can get more on to what's going on in the theater. Uh, first, let's start off with uh, what we've watched over the week. I watched a horrible movie, which I love watching, and interestingly, interesting enough, uh, you can watch it on, I believe, Amazon Prime or YouTube. I don't know if it's – YouTube's always a kind of a gray area because you don't know if it's legal or not. Right. But if they have such a good quality version of it, I feel like it's legal because usually the illegal ones have the – they shake the camera and they try to you know trick YouTube of not taking it off. Well, YouTube is pretty good about – yeah, copyrighted stuff, exactly. taking it down. So I feel if it's up there, you know, well, I should... you, uh, but yeah, exactly. I, I felt like, oh, we can watch this on YouTube. It's on Amazon Stream. I watched this movie called Chopping Mall, and uh, <laughs> how I came across this movie. It was on another podcast uh, that I like to listen to. It's How Did This Get Made? Uh, shout out to those guys. If you really like listening to some comedians make fun of movies, it's a great podcast to tune into. This movie is a 1986 horror film, and it's about kids going into a mall. And late night, and they have a new security at the mall. It's three robots. <laughs> and so, of course, the robots get malfunctioned by lightning, uh-huh. and then they turn into killers, whoever's left in the mall. There was lightning straight up in the mall? or no, it, it hit the building. Oh, it hit the building. A couple okay. times. And, of course, the, the kids who stayed after, and they had an after party at the furniture store because they worked at the furniture store. <laughs> Uh, the most interesting thing that came come from this movie that I – because I was listening to the podcast. I was like, this movie has to be ridiculous. The most interesting thing that came from it is how creepy the director was because they have commentaries. We can, we can listen to the audio commentaries. And this dude is one of the creepiest people I've ever heard because he has no shame <laughs> in nudity, has no shame in casting hot chicks and just letting them show their beauty in his words. What, what is uh, the problem? Well, <laughs> it's just the way he talks about it because oh, okay. <laughs> I can't imagine being an actress and listening to it and going, oh, he really likes me for my talent. Oh, okay. uh, what, what was funny, though, Chopping Mall came out in 1986. It's directed by Jim w- Wynorski. Uh, funny story about him. Everything after this movie, it was either softcore porn or a kid's movie. You know, because that's what your <laughs> daily job as a director does. It's an easy transition. Someone comes to you and says, hey, would you like to do – this corny sounding okay. All his softcore porn movies have those cheesy makeup made up names. So like the devil wears nada. <laughs> you know that. I mean that's <laughs> right. Busty cops to uh, the well, witches. That's not creative. The at witches of Breastwick. Well, that's pretty. Creative. And so uh, I'm not getting you all. The, the, I don't. It's I, I wouldn't mind talking to him just to learn how these things <laughs> get in front of him. But uh, he made a lot of movies. Yeah, his most recent movie, which I kind of laughed out loud about because I wanted it's on my queue on Netflix, is Fire from Below, 2009 uh, Kevin Sorbo movie. Well, so it's made okay. for TV. I'm definitely going to check that out. <laughs> but I laughed when I saw that connection. But Choppy Mall, overall, folks, you need to check it out because there's some of the scenes in the dialogue. And you could totally tell as if you're a movie maker, definitely watch this movie because you can definitely tell they try to get to this mall and get out of the mall. Like as in the special effects – 
and they used the real mall. Actually, if you're a fan of the movie Commando, mm-hmm. uh, they used the same mall. I noticed it. I was okay, watching, cool. and I was like, I know that elevator. Oh, I know those railings. And uh, so they used the mall at night, and so you could totally tell the, the gorilla style filming mm-hmm. they made. And the, all the, it's really funny to see a mall that busy. Because I was thinking, I was sitting there watching it, and I go, man, the mall used to be the place. If you think about it, oh, during the 80s, yeah. like that was the place for everybody, the family, the kids. That was the hangout joint, and especially all the different stores. Because in the movie, they, there's there's a gun store in this movie, <laughs> in the mall, which made no sense. I Because I, I, I wasn't around the mall area during that time. Do you all remember being – do you remember I, – I worked in the mall. Okay, in several, so what stores did you work stores. in? Uh, it, it was in Mississippi. They're, they're just – Well, off, was there a gun off. store? There was not a gun store. So they no. had a gun store here, and they yeah. had a paint store. And then I'm talking about the stores they interacted with. They had the paint store. <laughs> but the gun store was really funny, the scenes, because they're like, well, there's robots. What do we do? And the guys, of course, like, let's get guns. <laughs> and so they go to the gun store, and the guns are just laying out. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, can you imagine just, like, imagine going to a store, and then you reach out and just grab a gun. That's how they grabbed it, and the ammo's right there. I'm like, man, good thing there's... That's the way it should be, though, the, right? Well, I hope not. But uh, <laughs> overall, the movie had some really funny... Funny scenes, and so I encourage you checking it out. They had the '80s classic, uh, low budget film, so I encourage people to check that out. It's Chopping Mall, uh, and yeah, I'm a, that's a good movie. Uh, the what about you, Chris? What have you seen? Well, to prepare for this, I was trying to watch a couple of my favorite movies. Okay, which one of them was my fellow Americans? I wanted to see that, and I got vetoed by the wife. Um, and my second one was Delirious which is a John Candy movie, and I wanted to see that, but I got vetoed on that. So we settled on, we compromised, still did John Candy, so we did Who's Harry Crumb. Okay. Uh, I have not seen this movie, and this is right there at the end of his career, would you say? I No, I, well, he, he passed Wagon, away in the 90s, Wagons right? East was his last movie, I believe. Okay. And that was a good, probably, four or five years after this movie. Okay. Well, he, he I mean... His movies have a special touch, I feel like. And uh, when we say he, we're talking about John Candy. Uh, this movie, tell me about it. What's going on? Well, he plays Harry Crumb, who's a private detective. Okay. Who is from a long line of famous detectives, which is not really set up very well. Uh, but I guess his detective company has been taken over by uh, another uh, conglomerate led by Jeffrey Jones, which we won't even get into him at all about anything. But uh, so there's a case of a kidnapping that they don't really want to deal with. So they decide to send John Candy, Harry Crumb on this case. And the movie is just absolutely ridiculous from start to finish. It's, it's physical comedy 100% of the time. But John Candy is just so funny just standing there. So it, it, it worked, even though it's not a good movie. Um, but his comic timing and his, his just subtle jokes and, of course, him running around and jumping off stuff is, is very funny as well. Well, you can stream the movie on Amazon. Uh, it's a, You can rent it and all that kind of stuff. The director of the movie, uh, this was really his only movie he did. I'm not uh, surprised. He, he did a couple other ones, like 18 Again with George Burns and Charlie Slater. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a, kind of a classic 80s movie, I guess. Uh, because you know they, they, the the 80s old man becomes young again. Uh, so, you know that that movie has never been told uh, ever. Uh, but then he he did a bunch of TV and stuff like that with Billy Crystal and a bunch of uh, uh, primetime Glick with uh, Jimmy Glick with you know. Who, oh, I love that. So those are so was, funny. He was a producer and director on those shows. But yeah, so that's uh, that movie. All of his movies, though, all John Candy's movies, are pretty much a solid choice. Mm-hmm. You, is there a bad John Candy movie? Can you think of one on top of your head? Uh, the Wagons East was not good. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I don't, don't, don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. That's great. Well, uh, well, uh, right now that was what we watched. What are you looking forward to watching next week or in the future? What movies? Uh, in the future, I've got Odd Couple Two on my list to watch again. Okay, I'd I'd love that movie. So I think we're going to check that out next week. That's Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau, mm-hmm. uh, the second version of the it, Odd it, Couple. It's the prequel to Grumpy Old Men, right? I, it just, was before. I, I, well, I, I it know, was before. It, it was. I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing with better writing. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, the Odd Couple's a famous. Yeah, Neil play. Simon. Yeah, Neil Simon's fantastic. So. Uh, well, I'm going to check out uh, two movies on Amazon Prime. You can watch them right now after the show. Uh, I want to do What We Do in the Shadows, and then also Aeon Flux. That was a oh, comic yeah. mm-hmm. 
then it was the anime and then Charlie's Theron in honor of Atomic Blonde coming out. I wanted to check out this movie because this movie was made in 2005. So let's see if her her action chops are still there. Uh, but yeah, what we do in the shadows is a comedy and it's brought to you by the folks who do like Fly of the Concords and the, that kind of comedy as uh, the oh, New yeah. Zealand folks and the the synopsis of the movie is Viego Deacon Deacon and I can't pronounce his last name are vampires who are finding the modern life has them struggling with the mundane like paying rent keeping up with chore wheel trying to get into nightclubs and overcoming flatmate conflict so the thing is this <laughs> kind of a joke and they're all vampires so I'm excited about seeing that it's free to watch on Netflix uh, we're going to be wrapping up this segment coming up next we're going to be talking about a game. We're, 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 we're going to do a game. Sweet. You want to do it next? All right. Yeah, I'm Listen, all for it. You're listening to the Ticket Stub. You can find us online at the Ticket Stub Podcast on Facebook. And then also you can email us questions at the Ticket Stub Podcast at gmail.com. This is Dick with my special host, Chris Appel of the Grand Theater here in Conroe. We'll be back right after these messages. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the message line at 936 Six four seven three seven seven six to take your first step into the radio world. This is Rick TRC. Every Monday through Friday from three to seven, I play today's country hits on my show, Afternoons with Lone Star. The type of music that makes you want to get off your seat, stomp your feet, sing along at the top of your lungs, and not care who hears on Lone Star Community Radio. Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 and as always on Worldwide IRLoneStar.com Shall we begin? And we are beginning with the Ticket Set Podcast back for a second segment. This is Dick. The Ticket Set Podcast here is every Thursday at noon o'clock live on Lone Star Community Radio and IRLoneStar.com Worldwide. And we also have our podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, and don't forget YouTube and TV, Suddenlink, Channel 12. I'm sitting here with my co-host of the day, Chris Appel, with the Grand Theater. Uh, Connor's out of this uh, this week's episode, but he'll be back hopefully with full of stories and full of movies. It's funny that you were mentioning about the vetoing of uh, between your wife and you mm-hmm. uh, of, of movies to watch. And we actually had – I had my girlfriend on, and we talked about you know watching – Finding similar movie taste. Uh, yeah. So I, check, I encourage everybody to check that out. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to find the perfect mate who has the same taste as you. One thing I love about having someone who's different is you get to see different movies. And another thing I like about this podcast is it forces me to watch movies uh, yeah. that I don't normally sit down and watch. Uh, my favorite kind of movies are stupid movies. You know, Commando, yep. uh, Choppy Mall, like that's another great one. Um, you know, I think it's Highway Ticket to Hawaii. I think it's what's called. Something like that, or high ticket. Oh to no! I, can't. I just saw that like a couple months ago. Are you serious? Oh my oh, gosh! That see, movie. The, the one thing I always like about watching movies is watch, thinking about how they make this. Why is this going on? And that's one of those other movies that was made by a bunch of amateurs. It seemed like, and mm-hmm. I think they really were. They were they were the dudes in California who weren't big studio producers, but they had enough money either from another you know adventure or something yeah. like that, and they wanted to make a movie. And they, they all had the same theme: pretty ladies and yeah. uh, and ridiculous <laughs> action. Because that, actually that movie's known for the sequence of the skateboarder being shot up yes. in the air by a rocket launcher. Yes. So yeah. so that's going to be exciting. But uh, we're so back. So ch- check that movie out. Check definitely. that movie yeah. out. It's, it's, worth, it's worth it. Uh, so Chris is uh, the GM over at the Grand Theater. And so I hope he knows a lot about movies. I know various bits about the trivia movies. So we're going to play a game. Uh, Connor brought this up. I think he was like our mom, and we're going to be spending time together, so we had to come up with an event or, <laughs> right. or activity for us to do. All right. So we're going to have Austin be the moderator of this, and so Austin, tell the audience what this game is. All right. So this is What is the Connection? What is the Connection? Okay. So what is the Connection? So I'm going to give you each three movies that all star one common actor or actress, and you're going to have to guess. Okay. 
who is that common actor or actress? Whoever guesses and gets the most of them guesses right. first? Guesses or, or first. First. So is there a dinger or anything? Or we just raise our oh, hand? Oh, we guess first? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so how about this? I'm going to have to add this. If we get it wrong the first guess, we're, we, can't, we, get a, we don't get a point no matter what. No. Right? No. If both of you get it wrong, I'll tell you. Because I tried to make this really hard. Well, good. No, I meant more of because it's on a point system, right? So if I get it right, I get a point. If I get it wrong, we get zero points. Right? Okay. And then we can't just keep guessing. Right. All right, so we get one guess. Right. Okay, cool. You want to just slap the table? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't – I think uh, raising our hand will be – no. Yeah, slap radio, table. Though. Slap table. <laughs> All right, that's Give good. Give the TV audience a visual. Yeah, well, we, they're, yeah. they're seeing my pretty face right now, uh, so they're all right. Uh, one thing we do in games is we have stakes. Okay. High stakes. So streaking on Main Street for the loser, we can do that, right? We're all agree about no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's let's do the emoji movie. You wanna do that? Wait, the loser what, has to go see the has emoji. To watch it? Has to, okay. that's okay. coming out this weekend and yeah. no one really knows. We'll talk about that later, uh, about the grand and okay. get taking everyone to go see sure. the emoji movie. So that that's the stakes, folks. What is the connection? Loser has to see the emoji movie. Uh, okay. I've been Austin. watching a lot of Jeopardy lately. Oh, so. man. So you got your buzzer buzzer hand ready? Yeah, we'll see. Okay. I'm ready, Austin. All right. So, first up, the three movies are Donnie Darko, Southpaw, and Nightcrawler. Jake Gyllenhaal. No. That's not how you say the name. Oh, Gyllenhaal? <laughs> if I know how to say it, I can steal. No, 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 no. Jeopardy people let it slide all the time. <laughs> do? No, don't. they don't. Yeah, they do. There was like a kid who like clearly had the answer but spelled it wrong. Well, that's different for spelling. <laughs> that's Final Jeopardy too, so the stakes are higher. Hmm. Should we write it down? If you can spell it. Oh, can that's, you really spell like, Gillian? No, that's Gillian like one of the hardest names in the that's world That's right. Spell. I know it's right, so don't take this away from me. Okay, I'll give I'll give this one to All right. you. I'll but, give this but one just, to you. Just so we're clear, Gyllenhaal. It's this, Gyllenhaal. Yeah, that's what did I say? say Gyllenhaal. It. Oh come on! Oh come on! All right. All right. <laughs> I got a point. What's up? So the next one is Dunkirk, Mad Max Fury Road, and the. I knew it too. We just said his name. I'm gonna go with Tom Hardy. Final answer. Yes, that is correct. Dick won. Yeah. Chris won. Chris, you're not allowed to use your phone. I don't. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, you know what? You guys got fancy laptops, and all I've got here is good old fashioned American pine. I don't know. <laughs> if it's we pine. Sure, you sure it's China? It's a tree. It's probably China pine. It right? might be China pine. All right. What's next? All right. Next up is the Amazing Spider-Man, Birdman. Oh man, <laughs> Chris, Michael Keaton. Wrong! Oh. oh, keep going. You have to say the third movie. Yeah. La La Land. Oh, man. All right. So can you say those three again? The Amazing Spider-Man, Birdman, and La La Land. I have no idea. You give up? Yeah, I give up. Emma Stone. Oh, wow. I'm okay. an idiot. Oh, the, oh, okay. I got confused on Spider-Man. Yeah, me too. I was thinking the Tom Holland. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. I was thinking. All right, so no These points hard. to anyone for that round. All right, next up is Escape Plan, The Expendables, and Bullet to the Head. Chris. Sylvester Stallone. I should have known. Correct. I was going to say it, but I didn't want to wait till the third one. Because this guy's tricking yeah, us. Well, He's tricking a, us. Yeah, he is. He is. All right, this one. I, I think I did good on this one. The Iron Giant, Fate of the Furious. Vin Diesel. Yes, I did I not. So I did yeah, not. I didn't know. Yeah. Huh. So it's it, we're tied, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how many are there? Because I need to know how fast I need. There's to go. seven in total. Seven. So I don't know how many we've done. So we've done. Well, five. we've done four. Five. Four. Four. No, we four. have done five. Boom. I think I just got an extra point for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Moderator. All right. So these last two, I believe I've made very hard. I like All to right. think I have. Okay. All right. Jay and Silent Bob strike back. Curious George, and Stranger Than Fiction. Chris. Will Ferrell. Correct. Man. All right. Do we have, like, an overtime one? Because why don't I get oh. this one right? Are we tied? We both have to see the Emoji movie? 
Is this? Hmm. All right, Dude, we're ready. I'll let's come just, up let's, with. I don't know what the worry, score is. Let's worry about it. A after. million points for this one. Is that <laughs> what it is? Okay. I can come up with a tiebreaker during the next segment. All right, this one is the hardest one. In fact, I almost feel bad about doing this one. Okay. The Hobbit, War for the Planet of the Apes, and Jungle Book. Uh, Andy Securis or, uh, uh, what's his name? Andy Securis? He's not saying it right. I can say it right. Well, he played Gollum and he played... Yeah, it's Andy something. Andy, Andy, Andy Circus. Circus. Yeah. That's right. Well, I'm, I'm going to give it. Give it to him. I mean, he, he know who it was. Give it to him. We know I have a horrible time pronouncing things. <laughs> All I mean, right. A horrible so time. it is three to three. I can come up with one in the next segment. Okay, yeah. So that was a good game. I like mm-hmm. it. Um, we got a couple more minutes. I guess we can co- we can kind of cover uh, news that's happening around the movie world, right? Can we do that? Sure. Is that okay? Sure. Uh, probably the biggest news is Comic Con happened last weekend, San Diego International, and that's mm-hmm. usually when they announce all the big comic book movies coming out. Uh, and announcement wise, it really, I mean, they had the new Thor trailer, which makes it look really good. Uh, the only thing I've heard about it was people were worried about the runtime being under 100 minutes. So well, I kind of talk about on this podcast about, a lot about you can judge a movie by its runtime. Mm-hmm. So the only thing I don't like about that is this looks like the most fun movie out of all of them outside of Guardians of the Galaxy. So I want to see more. Well, of see, fun. The, the shorter the movie is, the more excited I am about it. Really? Yeah. Oh, is that because you just don't want to be there? If it's if I look at running time and it's like an hour and a half, I'm like, that's that's the one we're doing. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Man. Well, like because... horror movies are generally around that. Or well, yeah. hour 30, hour 45. and It's yeah, hard it to just, keep the... Especially kids' movies don't need to be like two hours and ten minutes. I'm not sure how long... What kids' movies are you is. saying that are two hours and a minute? Uh, Despicable Me, I think, was over two hours and a minute. I'm not mistaken. I well, think like, it was. Well, Thor, if you look, is Ragnarok. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, I like it. When I saw the trailer for it, it's based off of a, uh, a storyline where now they're off the planet, which I'm excited. That's one thing people, a lot of people don't realize in the Marvel Universe. A lot of it takes place outside of Earth. Mm-hmm. And I think Guardians of the Galaxy, and if you count Doctor Strange, uh, they're off the planet. Now they're finally off the planet uh, with this one. So Thor is a god, folks. He's from another planet, and now mm-hmm. we finally get to see it. Uh, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the Hulk being in and actually having a conversation as the Hulk. Because usually when you see the Hulk on screen, mm-hmm. he says like two words, yeah. gone. But most people don't realize he can be <laughs> Bruce Bannerish yeah. Hulk. Uh, so I'm excited. And then uh, they have a really good cast list for this movie. So uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, another exciting news is they're going to be – this comic book thing is just taking a whole new world on different stories. So Batgirl. Was announced. Cool. So that's going to be interesting. Doctor Doom was announced. They don't have an actress for Bad Girl yet. It's just I don't. I, I didn't really see anything. I just know Josh. No. Jo- uh, Josh Josh Sweet. You know Josh Wooden. Josh. Sweeten. <laughs> you know Josh Wooden. Uh, he is helming it, and he's the guy who did all the like Serenity TV sh- series. He, and he did also the did Avengers. The first Avengers. Mm-hmm. And he... he's doing Justice League right now. So. Yep. I, you know what's funny? He on. He's doing Justice League. Yeah, because Zack Snyder had to drop out. He had a family emergency. So sure he did. He just ever his movies since just suck. like <laughs> obviously, I think someone actually passed away. The in start family, of so. spring. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that not, is not, no shit there. Awful. I'm kidding. Yeah. Those movies, but then again, the movies still suck. So uh, I am that is, ready. If y'all are ready to determine who uh, is going, to no, have we'll do to it see. next time. We'll do open. That's the tease. You always got a tease on the radio, man. We're still, we, okay. Uh, probably the biggest news though announced was. James Bond's coming back. Yes. With more Daniel Craig. I know that's always been up in the air with that guy. Uh, you know what's weird, though, is the common thing with Bond is people, the actors always say, I get tired. How can you get tired of playing James Bond, man? I have no like, idea. I've like, never understood that. I, I've never if, understood If they want that. you back, you go back, and you have fun with it. And that's what makes James Bond so much fun, because if you see the actor being relaxed, I guess the new tone in this one, it's kind of hard, because it seems so more realistic, and the punishment Bond takes seems... So much more, like the ripple effect happens a lot mm-hmm. in that movie, and you can see him going downhill the whole series. And it's really great. It's going to be interesting if it's they're going to continue with the current storyline, they or they're just to. going to do a one-off. They can't uh, see that, but see that's the problem. They they put their foot down and like we're not doing that. We're doing this really cool series of this movie with the same character. But see the Pierce Brosnan and the Sean Connery, you could do whatever they want. Yeah, but they they do it, they're going to lose a lot of like diehard Daniel Craig fans. Well, the thing about Bond movies, and it happens with every single Bond actor, is that the movies gradually get 
more ridiculous oh, and more so. ridiculous and more ridiculous. So we're we're just tipping to that point on this last Daniel Craig movie, which I, I love the movie Spectre. Uh, so I'm curious to see if they just go way over the top with it, like they have with all of the other Bond actors. Well, yeah, I, I mean Spectre wasn't that over the top, was it? No, it wasn't. There was just a a little bit. Yeah, of, the plot was a little bit, and then yeah. I mean, it's really the quirkiness of the Bond universe outside the action sequences and outside the, the new versions of it. Those are what I enjoyed, you know, just the ridiculous. He'll do this really cool thing and look at the girl and pop the champagne at the same time. And that's what, that's what Sean <laughs> yeah. Connery did. And, you know, right. and he has this really cool car. Mm-hmm. And that, that was what I liked about it. But, uh, yeah, it'd be really interesting to see what they do. Yeah, I hope we don't, like, go the Pierce Brosnan route where you started great with GoldenEye and then you end up with Die Another Day, which is probably considered the worst Bond Wait, movie. you didn't like the iceberg being melted? Oh, oh and oh, where he's on the, uh, the he's parasailing on a, yeah the, it's not a, a part of the it's like vehicle a, he was driving, so. Yeah, that was a great movie. What well, the about? music was great. Uh, <laughs> was that Madonna or who was? No, that? not that. Troy. Not that. Not not the theme song. But oh. the, the oh, score like... of the movie. Had... But that movie was great. It had the Diamond Face guy. Yes. Yeah, so hey, come on, oh, North so Korea. Good. The border opening border scene. Yes, See, it was so good. Now you're talking trash. No, I'm scared. That movie actually is really bad. Uh, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. The hotel, the melting hotel. That was yes. great. Um, yes. I know way too much about that movie now. I think I want, now I want to watch it. That's great. <laughs> it has uh, Halle Berry in it. Is it Halle Berry in that yeah, one? It is yep. Halle Berry, yeah. Yeah. And they have, yeah. That's, that's... I watched that movie four times by myself in the theater because the first time I was so excited to see it and I thought, okay, did I like it? I have no idea. So I have to watch it again and then subsequently. People did the was, same thing with the good. Star Wars prequels. Yeah. Everyone was like, I'm really excited about these movies. And then they go and they go, I don't know if I like this or not. Yeah. <laughs> Usually that's a bad movie, folks. If you, if you don't like it the first time, immediately. Uh, I actually like the prequels. I think I'm the only one that mm-hmm. likes that stuff. But uh, I'm not a big Star Wars fan. I've never been really into it. Yeah. Well, well then you know what stinks now is if you're growing up in the movie world is you're, you're saturated with sci-fi and fantasy now. Mm-hmm. See, that was cool back then because that was the only sci-fi big budget movies you were getting at the time. So it was really cool to see a spaceship fly yeah. around and have these really cool lightsaber scenes, but now it's like every movie and every movie has to have a slow-mo and all, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. it's just getting, it's getting saturated folks. I, we were talking about that early on the other podcast that I really hate what they're doing now. They need to space it out. They all need to come together. And it's like, we can only release three comic book movies a year, folks. Only three. Oh, yeah. And that's even too many, uh, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's gross. But, uh, you know, you're listening to the podcast, uh, take a step podcast right now. Uh, we're here every Thursday live on Lesser Community Radio. We're going to be back. We're going to do the end of the game because we are sure, at man. a tiebreaker. I'm sitting here with my special co-host, Chris Appel, of the Grand Theater of uh, North and Connor. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And I think coming up next outside the game is we're going to talk about the Emoji Movie because that's a big movie coming out for what I always say is like the biggest budget advertising-wise. I don't know why that movie's made. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> so that's exciting. So stick around. You're listening to the Ticket Sub. We'll be right back. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app for your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That is Conroe's FM 104.5-106.1. Hey guys, I'm Joey Savage. Corey DLG. We are Nerd Thug Radio. Catch us every Monday from 1 to 3 and check out our website, nerdthugradio.com. We like to talk about quilting, horseback riding, and baking quiche. Actually, we don't, but we do like talking nerdy to you. That's right. Every Monday from 1 to 3 p.m., hashtag talking nerdy to you. Shall we begin? Welcome back to the Take a Step Podcast. Live right now on Lone Star Community Radio. We're here every noon o'clock on Thursday. Connor's out this week, but next week he'll be back. Right now, we have Chris Appel as my special co-host, and we were playing a game last segment, and, uh, oh, sorry, Chris Appel of the Grand Theater over north of Conroe, so if you want to go see movies in a movie theater, check out the Grand Theater. Uh, They have 14 screens, so that's pretty cool, and a special plug out for those who have kids, if uh, you want to go see a movie on the uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of every week until September, I believe. Uh, you're, uh, uh, it's it's two weeks to go. Yeah, two weeks to go, yeah, so Hotel Transylvania on the first and the second 
uh, four dollar tickets for everybody, and that includes kids popcorn and drink. So the adults get the kids popcorn and drink. Sure do. Heck yeah! So that's at ten thirty on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Ten uh, ten. Ten ten. Sorry, 10, 10. I'm getting almost it right. So more information can be found. <laughs> <laughs> if it's kids there movies and they're showing at ten ten, y'all should show the adventures of ten ten. It's it's not ten ten. It's just ten o'clock. I don't know how we got this confused, but. Yeah, but that's what we do here, right? <laughs> oh, no, the correct times can be found online at the Grand Theater right there. Uh, so let's get back to the game. So what happens if we both get this wrong? Have we figured this out yet? I have not figured that one So what out. we're going to do, if we both get this wrong, rock, paper, scissor. That's fair. On three. So like one, two, and then shoot. But we, as <clears> if we have to get there. Okay. Let's do this. All right. The movies are The Magnificent Seven. Which version? You can't do that. You got to the modern, okay. the modern version. Zero Dark Thirty, and the Lego Movie. I know that. I know the. I know who it is, but I don't know the actor's name. I have no. I idea. know everything he's in. Um, I know who it is. It's. Is there a time limit? No. Can I can I, I say one. like seven other movies he's in and because I don't know the name. Mm. Yes, I know the please. first name. I know the first name. It starts with Chris. it's Chris. You can steal that. Um, it's Chris H, right? No, that's nowhere close. It's that's such a wrong letter. It's Chris something. There's so many Chris's in Hollywood right, All right. now. All I'm, right, I'm, I know who it is. I just can't think of the name, and I can name other oh, movies he's boy. in. So. I, I, I have no guess. If you want to name those other movies to help each other out. Well, he's going to get it. I, I have no idea. I, have, I don't know his last name, but I know all the other stuff he's in. It's Chris. You're such a big fan of him. I am. He's really funny. I'm not gonna say because I'm gonna go, that, that would give it away. So I'm gonna go neutral on it. I'm <laughs> conceding that my answer. So well, I have to concede because unless it's Chris Farley, I have no idea. Oh yeah. no. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a dude from Jurassic World and Guardians of the Galaxy and Parks and Recreation. It's Chris something. Oh my gosh, we're gonna get blasted on, for not guys. knowing this. We are gonna get blasted. There's so many people. Who are supposed You're to getting that. blasted right now by me, Chris Pratt. Yes, that do is. Do I win? I don't know. Don't no, already done. Conceded. I conceded. You conceded. Already conceded. Yeah, but I can't. Well, okay, yeah, fair enough. So, rock, paper, scissors are on three. Okay. One, two, and then three. All right. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Dang it. Oh. He won. He won the game. That sucks. I did scissor. He did rock. How That's unfortunate how life, for me life goes. that I did not get to watch this emoji The emoji movie. movie is on my to-do list. Great. All right. In fact, I'll wear the emoji mask and do the rest <laughs> of the show. Yes. So, Chris. Yeah, I think I should, too, because... Chris brought a. I don't I gotta, know, can you hear me? I'm trying to. Are those yeah, we can hear for you. adults? I don't know. Chris brought these great uh, promo items of the Emoji Movie. Let's talk about this. Okay, I gotta take it off. I can't. Okay. I'll hold <laughs> well, it up. I need, a, I need I'll hold a, it up. I need a. I need a screen cap <laughs> yeah. so you can hold it up or something. I can't. I gotta prove I was here. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, people know the movie's coming out. Let's do that. Great transition sure. right there, Chris. Wonderful. Uh, movies coming out uh, are going to be pretty interesting. We have Atomic Blonde coming out. The director is David Leak. Leak. And good thing he wasn't a trivia question. And uh, he is actually directing Deadpool 2. This is his first movie he's directing. Uh, he's a stunt coordinator. So I'm kind of excited about Atomic Blonde. That's fe- featuring Charlize Theron, James McAvoy, which he's not in the trailer, it looks like. So that was kind of a surprise when I saw... Uh, James McAvoy in it because I like him as an actor and then John Goodman's in it uh, Undercover MI6 agent is sent to Berlin during Cold War basically it's Taken slash any other action movie new John Wick that's what it is but it's a chick doing it mm-hmm. and she's blonde so there you go it's going to be good <laughs> uh, it's made by a stunt coordinator that's why I'm excited about it uh, because usually stunt coordinators know a little bit more about the reality of fighting so I like that because yes. some movies are really fake and some movies look really good. Like The Expendables looks fake. John Wick looks believable, but not at the same time. Very entertaining. Uh, different fighting styles in movies. But uh, are you going to see The Atomic Blonde? I want to. I mean, it's supposed to have one of the greatest. Do you have to bring your wife? Is that what you're saying you want uh, to? Yeah, I probably should. I think she would. I think she'd. I mean, that's a woman role. I mean, I think that's a great excuse for Yeah, her. I, think, I think she'd like it. We'll watch it. And, uh... What's, what's interesting about Charlie Theron and how old she is, so I'm interested to see what she's capable of. How old is she? Well, she's born in 1975. 
and so her oh, old dad is. Okay. I thought uh, she was a lot older than me. But uh, but that's just it. Was she's in it, in the early two thousands? She was in a couple action movies, and so now yeah. she's returning, I guess, to the action film. The Emoji movie's coming out. Can I read the synopsis? Synopsis, please. I'm gonna, for the Emoji movie. I, I have. I'm gonna put the. And mask if you on. don't, if you don't know what emojis are, folks. If you're on your phone and you do a winky face, your phone, your newer phones automatically turn it into a cartoon winky face. And looking at yes. looking at the uh, poster, it's all of them. Yes. Even the piece of poop. <clears throat> it is. <laughs> Who's played by Patrick Stewart. So That's okay. fitting. Here we go. Hidden inside a smartphone, the bustling city of Textopolis is home to all emojis. Each emoji only has one facial expression except for Gene. An exuberant emoji with multiple expressions. Determined to become normal like the other emojis, Gene enlists the help of his best friend, High Five, and a notorious code breaker called Jailbreak. That's not creative, really. <laughs> uh, during their travels through the other apps, the three emojis discover a great danger that could threaten their phone's very existence. Just like a middle schooler's book report. It sounds really but good. I think kids would enjoy it. Well, I mean, it's very colorful, and and I'm support any movie that has a piece of poop on screen at all times. I'm all yeah. about that. If they're <laughs> if they're able to do that, that's a great trivia question. What movie has the most screen time of a piece of poop? It is probably <laughs> the. Emo- I'm not kidding you, folks. When yeah. I say piece of poop, I'm not kidding you. It is a piece of poop. Uh, is that is that really what it is though? Like I always wonder why they put that in the phone. You're gonna say something. I'd awesome. say I'd classify it as a poop emoji. It's not a. Piece of poop. Uh, it doesn't. Poop emoji it doesn't. It doesn't and... have any smell. I <laughs> we'll imagine. See, I want to see. It's what curly they... though. I think it's Let's like see. a dog's version. Of well, it. okay. This is how the official way you do it. You look at how they're crediting Patrick Stewart, who voices it. Poop. That's what it says. They credit him as nice. poop. Wait, that's so great. Uh, this movie. I don't know why they wanted to make it. It's almost because one thing I guarantee you would happen when they started writing it and they uh, put it into the the. The funnel or the t- the talk of the town. I bet Apple or somebody whoever created it was going to sue them or something because they created the emo- whoever created the graphic of the emojis. But mm-hmm. I think the world shares the emojis. Is that <laughs> would you would you say that it's a free world for the emoji world? I mean, people were drawing smiley faces and stuff before. Because I've actually won. Yeah. I actually won the poop at the Montgomery County Fair. We were, I went to the fair with my girlfriend and we did one of those carnival games and I won because I'm just so good. And like one get like you get to choose one plush toy, and I'm like I want the poop, and so <laughs> and I have that f- poop. I think they animate them a little differently than they would be on like iPhones. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I wonder what the yeah. copyright's like because it's like oh we just add blue eyes instead of green and put some hair on it, right. and then, like that's not the same smiley face that is universal right. to everybody else. But uh, that movie comes out this weekend. Uh, you can check it out. The Grand also. Other movies coming out. Uh, there's some. Lower end movies. When I say lower end, I meant like documentaries and stuff. The inconvenient sequel, Truth to Power. I, you know, what's funny is I watched the first one, and I think that was released ten years ago or yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm really interested to see how a movie that makes predictions follows up on those predictions because no movie wants to say they're wrong. But this movie is one of those wishy washy movies that people <laughs> politically hate or politically yeah. love. Uh, one thing I find interesting about it is the credits. When you do documentaries, you can kind of credit anyone as archive footage. So, like, if you look at this movie and they try to promote who's in it, I mean, they got everybody that's really political in it. I wonder if they even get to sign off on that since it's considered archive footage. So Donald Trump, like, they're saying Donald Trump's in the movie. Oh, okay. So stuff like that. Uh, but it's it's kind of funny. I, I love movie. I love documentaries, but I also love sequels of documentaries because they do follow up and especially about this stuff which is all supposed to be scientific so I'm interested to see what the backlash is going to be on that one uh, outside that the, that's it for this week uh, yeah. there's some lower end movies that are opening in LA and stuff like that but we don't have to talk about those movies uh, what we will talk about when we come back from this break uh, we're going to talk about what the blockbuster was how we're doing with that game that we do every year and then we'll talk more about the grand and what's coming up at the grand so stick around. You're listening to the Ticket Step Podcast. We're here every noon o'clock on Thursday. If you have questions, if you're listening to the podcast right now and you want to contact us, the Ticket Step Podcast at gmail.com or Facebook, the Ticket Step Podcast. We'll be right back. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, 
music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. All right. I know I'm interrupting the show for you, but this is Dick telling you to make sure to check out Mornings of Lone Star's YouTube channel. I know Lone Star Community Radio has a lot of shows, but I do a lot of great interviews too. So that's what usually what I put on my YouTube page. Just look up Mornings with Lone Star. I'm right there. Hit the subscribe button. Check me out every time after I have an interview. More information on my lineup and who's coming in, IRLoneStar.com slash MWLS for Mornings with Lone Star. So make sure to check it out. Shall we begin? And we're back on the Ticket Up Podcast. This is Dick, your host. Connor's not here today. I'm just going to keep saying that because it's a great day. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. We miss you, Connor. But my special co-host to replace him for today is Chris Appel, the Grand Master, uh, or General Manager as the locals <laughs> call him, uh, over there at the Grand Theater. And coming up this weekend, I know you were talking about you're doing this again for this emoji deal. Yes. It's so visual that you just told me why well, I'm going to go to the theater this weekend because I do have to see the movie. Uh, is there's going to be a life-size poop. There is. <laughs> and I've, do you think they just kind of said, all right, let's just own it. Let's own the poop and put it on. Patrick Stewart well, is the that, voice actor. That's how you know they're owner. And, I mean, it, the, yeah, you, you get him to do it, you're, you're golden yeah. there, I think. And what's funny about Patrick Stewart is a lot of people don't know how good of an actor he is because mm-hmm. majority of people who do know who he is is through, either through the stage because he's like a Shakespearean – respected stage actor full mm-hmm. out like probably one of the top stage actors there there is and then of course star trek which is like alienates three-fourths of all the audience of the general public you're forgetting the x-men yeah but he's not you don't get to see the acting chops that's true uh in those movies unfortunately because he's in a wheelchair most of the time but uh and he had that uh, series on showtime blunt talk oh yeah see, i haven't hilarious. seen that it's, i have not seen so that good. is it still going on uh, they just finished up the second season. We need to keep him employed. Yeah. So he can be the poop, and then he can be blunt talk. Uh, but you guys at the Grand are doing a special event this weekend, which I'm going to go to. Yes, from 12 so, it, from twelve to 2 Saturday, uh, we're going to have the life-size poop. That's not all we got going on. But there's... Uh, I'm getting a picture done. Yeah. I'm getting a picture made. <laughs> so so come, come, take, uh, come take a photo. Uh, we're going to have games for the kids. They can win some prizes, some emoji prizes, so... It'd be kind of cool. See, I'm not kidding you. These, this studio is really putting a lot of stuff behind this movie. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's because it they realize it didn't cost that much to make it, and they're like, "Oh man, we have all this extra money to spend on masks that we can wear on the ticket stub." And well, we paid for that. Okay. No, they didn't do that. I want to make that clear. Well, thank you. <laughs> right there. Uh, but no, I think it's really interesting because it's one of those things I can't imagine being a marketer for a kids movie because it's a big hit or a big miss. Because kid kids movies don't have to be particularly wonderful. In a sense. Yeah, like I, kids are still going to go see it. I don't know. So, sometimes, like with Valerian, okay. I, I could see that being a bomb a mile away. You know, last year. Oh yeah. And they just need to change the name. Well, so I don't know what. Who is deciding what, what's getting made and what isn't getting made? It's it's interesting I don't know, to kind of figure. Well, the Emoji movie I, again, like there's no backstory. All they had was icons on a phone, and so some team of writers go, "How can we make a cool kid story involving faces and poop?" And uh, <laughs> they did. So yeah. for, so from noon to two. Now is this you have the movie times. So this is going on in the theater, not during the movie. This is something that no, it's, it's going to be in can... our lobby. So you can come in, take photos, and uh, you know, hang out before the movie starts. Now, have you have you talked to the person who's wearing the poop costume? Yes, yes. It, she's actually very excited. I mean, that's. I think I, I was going to say I'll do it. If, oh, nice. If you really need somebody yeah. to do it, cause, <laughs> I mean, think about you going. You're going to Disney World, and you see your favorite Disney princess or your favorite Disney prince or whatever. And uh, or you see Mickey, and it's like Mickey, come here, and like what's, I mean, poop, come here, <laughs> like I don't, I don't know. It's like one of those kind of dreams. It's like what you dream about. You're like, why am I hugging a piece of poop right like, now? Yeah, I just, I want, I want to see the parents' reactions. And uh, you know, how, anything, how many photo ops we got? And well, if anything, it gets people going. Like, what's this movie all about? Mm-hmm. So they'll go see the emoji movie. That's that is hilarious. Uh, what we're gonna be following up now is the blockbuster. Uh, 
we have one winner or new crown winner, and then we have a still a winner from previous Gardens of the Galaxy is still winning. They made like a hundred something million dollars. Dunkirk, which is probably the last movie to really challenge them, uh, only made fifty one million. Um, and that's actually people say that they always try to be positive about good movies and like, oh, that did well. To me, that's not near as enough of like what I'm thinking about. Gardens of the Galaxy doubled that. Mm-hmm. So that means they do, they had doubled the viewership of it. So if Dunkirk was so good, uh, people didn't see it twice, but they saw, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy two twice. So unfortunately, that happened. Um, and Girls Trip, the surprise movie of the summer, from what yes. I'm reading from reviews, made 31 million. I think that's actually won the lightweight. So congratulations to those folks. Connor has these details. See, I don't do this part, <laughs> so we just kind of fly by it. And uh, next week we'll have more documentation on who the official people are. Uh, but Girls Trip, I've read really good reviews on that movie, and it's one of those things that the raunchy R-rated movies are a new fad for the past, like, four years ever since The Hangover. And then now they finally have a good one because it's, like, seven bad ones and then one good one. Yeah, I think we were surprised by it. Uh, there's just a, a ton of people wanted to see the movie this last weekend, which is great because we had plenty of screens well, for it. Well, would you say as the uh, – being in and out of a theater, do reviews re- – I think reviews really help people to talk about it and get people – unless they're Dunkirk because no one really cared after the first time. Yeah, it, it depends on which movie because some are review proof. But uh, yeah, I mean I think that does – And I mean if it's mentioned on whatever news channel they watch normally, that kind of helps. Uh, well, I mean it's, it's interesting to see a movie like Girls Trip become i mean 31 million dollars that's not a bad opening weekend for a movie like that No, that's really good yeah. and so i mean clearly within the three days four days people were talking about it mm-hmm. they were like hey i just saw this girl's trip you got to see it it is hilarious and well I, they would come out in big groups well, that's what i'm saying yeah like it, yeah they would get all get together we're all going mm-hmm. again i bet a couple i bet there's a lot of return customers for that movie that weekend because their other friends when it couldn't make it because yeah. they're working or whatever mm-hmm. uh and then especially what i what i like about it is i would go see it I would not be at all dissuaded about going to see that movie because I'm like, yeah, it's comedy, it's raunchy comedy, and it has some really good actresses in it. And yeah. like, then, so I'm I'm down for that. Uh, so check out that movie. That's got movies out, and the movies that are going to be challenging this weekend is Atomic Blonde and, of course, the Emoji movie. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for uh, having me. How, what's the status of the chairs and the beer and all that stuff that the Grand's working on? Uh, the, the chairs, I mean, we still got them slated for towards the end of the year. End um, of the year, okay. And uh, the beer and wine, our license has taken a little bit longer than some of the other locations they're trying to do. But it's still, we're still trying to rock we're it working out and on get it, it done. So that's yeah. exciting. And there's a lot of movies to be seen. And also, as we're leaving you today, folks, want to remind you, starting next week on our show, we're going to be giving away two tickets to the Grand. You can take your date or you can take your friend. Uh, we can win them on the ticket sub every week. So that's a special thanks to the Grand for helping us out with that. They really want you to go see movies, folks, and soon they want you to enjoy it even more with the new seating and beer and alcohol sales there for adults. Mm-hmm. And uh, don't forget their summer kids deal is still going on for a couple more weeks. More information on that is, the, I think it's called thegrandtheater.com. Uh, it's R-E for thegrandtheater.com. Uh, so... Dick here. Chris again. Thanks for coming. Thank you. We'll be back next Thursday here on the Ticket Step Podcast. Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936-647-3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images.